In this video, we're going to talk about something called spin selling. It's actually an incredible book, and we're going to talk about how you can use it to write more effective copy. Now, what does it take to actually write copy that works? Well, today it's actually harder and harder to respond to the requirements of search engines because you want to make sure that you're found on the search engine. Then you also, at the same time, have to make sure that you're capturing the interest of your readers and your visitors. And then you still need to be able to get some sort of action done, whether that's just having them click through to another page in your blog or even to purchase something. So there's a lot that we're trying to balance and we need to be able to combine ingenuity, SEO skills, and then still provide what visitors need so that they're able to interact and engage with your page and ideally sharing it with their friends. So that's where spin selling comes in. Now this is the copy of the book and you can find it on uh, an Amazon. It's a really, really great book um, to read. And what it basically comes down to is these guys went and they did a bunch of interviews and they figured out when it comes to typical salespeople, they analyzed all the different questions that salespeople ask and they came out with that there were four different types of questions. There were situation questions, there were problem questions, there were implication questions, and then there were need payoff questions. So of course those letters, S-P-I-N, is where spin selling came from. So spin selling, it's typically used in sales, of course, but we can use it in copywriting and when we're writing our blogs. And here's how you can do that. So first, think about the situation. This is where you want to use the first sentence or sentences or paragraphs to pull in your page visitors and then start with a situation statement or a question. You want to keep it brief so that you don't actually overwhelm them. You want to make sure you do your research, you know, basically making sure that you know how well that you know your audience and you're confirming to the audience that, yes, this is me. And then you want to ask some questions or probe into something with a clear purpose and goal. The second thing you want to do is mention the problem. This is where you want to give your visitors an idea of what the problem is that they're currently facing. And then of course, engage that audience by tugging on something that bugs them. So this could be something, let's, let's go ahead and give some examples to this. So the first part, and we'll go back to situation here. The very first part of this could be, um, is it difficult for you to lose weight, right? So there's a situation question. You're getting inside the prospect's head and all of a sudden they're going, yep, this is me. I'm in that situation. So problem, now we already talked about that weight, right? So that's sort of moving into that a little bit. But really, the problem could be something like where you define the problem a little more. You could do something like, you know, have you tried the same yo-yo diet over and over again only to lose weight and then bring it back? So now you're talking about a specific problem. The third thing is the implications. This is where you spell out the possible implications or consequences, basically, that the problem that you had will bring if they don't take care of it. And this is where you're sort of planting those seeds of fear and discomfort, anxiety, dissatisfaction, and desire. Now, I know this can sound kind of manipulative when you're watching this going, geez, do I really need to do this? But at the end of the day, if your product solves a specific problem, sometimes people need to be more aware of what that problem could do if they don't take care of it. So for an example of somebody who's really, really overweight and they really want to lose the weight, but they're just having problems doing that and they're at the point of giving up, right? And so if you have a problem, if you have a product or a service that can truly help this person improve their lives, then they need to understand where they are and they need to understand what that problem, if it's not addressed, can do to them. So this is where you start talking about, you know, make sure you're not cutting your life short you know, with, with this extra weight that you're carrying around, make sure that you can go out and enjoy the time with your kids and you can be active with your friends if that's what you're wanting or find that perfect person if, if you're worried about your attractiveness or whatever it is that not losing the weight might cause if they don't do that. Now, obviously some people are perfectly fine with that, you know, and that's the case, obviously your copy wouldn't work for them, but they're not your market anyway, so that's okay. You just want the people who are kind of like, you know what, this is an issue, but ah, I'll take care of it tomorrow. And you need to give them a reason why, you know what, now's the time to take care of it. And that's where these implication type copy points come into play. Finally, there's need payoff. Now this is where you're the person, because you again, captive audience here, they're going through your copy, they haven't gone anywhere. And now you've taken them through this situation where they understand this is the audience that you're talking to. They understand they have a problem. They understand the implications that if that problem isn't taken care of, what could happen and the potential consequences of that and then finally, since you're right there, you've got them, you offer the need payoff. This is where you come and say, hey, listen, here's a solution. So wouldn't it be great if you could find a fitness coach that can help you to actually lose the weight that you've been going through that doesn't force you to take these ridiculous diets and it will give you the high touch personal coaching that you need that you haven't found before in other solutions. Like that's your need payoff. And all of a sudden they're going, wow, yes, that would be great. That's exactly what I want. And there you go. You're the first person to present it and you can put yourself at the head of the line. So this is before they realize that they want to take care of the problem. You help them understand the importance of the problem and how to solve it and then gave them this exact steps that they need to take to solve it. That's the need payoff. So with your seriously simple marketing hack for today, here's what you want to do. 
For your next blog post, try and incorporate some of these spin selling techniques. So put this on a particular blog post. Maybe it's just to get an opt-in if you wanted to do that. Now, once you publish it, make sure you track how effective it is. And you can do this using Google Analytics for tracking page views and how much time people are spending on page and, of course, the conversions. And then you want to compare these stats with previous blog posts to sort of see if there's a difference. Are you getting more action on this particular page than on others? And to keep it simple, if you really wanted to avoid the whole opt-in call to action, just make it a place a comment call to action, like write a comment type call to action, or you can make the call to action sharing on Facebook or Twitter, and then see if your shares are going up and down. There's lots of easy ways to manage and measure this. Of course, for more information at any point, just visit us at seriouslysimplemarketing.com. You find lots of other great resources there for you. And of course, we've got our own opt-in list there as well. If you'd like to join our list and be a part of uh, our updates. Thanks again for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one.